The sun had barely risen on a quiet suburban street, the kind of neighborhood where nothing bad ever seemed to happen. On the surface, it was a picture of tranquility. Birds chirped, children played, and families greeted each other with warm smiles as they went about their day. Behind the closed doors of one such home lived a small family, a father named Daniel, his 10-year-old son, Aiden, and soon a new addition would arrive in their lives. Daniel had raised Aiden on his own since his wife's tragic passing when Aiden was only five. The bond between father and son was unbreakable, rooted in love, care, and an understanding forged through shared grief. But life was about to take a dark turn, one no one could have predicted. Daniel had recently remarried. Clara entered their lives as a breath of fresh air, someone who promised to fill the void left behind by Aiden's mother. She was charming, beautiful, and seemed to adore Daniel and Aiden equally. The wedding was small, but beautiful, filled with laughter and promises of a bright future. Daniel believed that after years of being a single father, he had finally found someone who would help him care for Aiden. Clara's sweet words and seemingly loving gestures made her appear the perfect stepmother. Clara, in the early days, played her role well. She showered Aiden with affection, cooked him meals, helped him with his schoolwork, and even bought him little gifts. Aiden, at first hesitant, began to warm up to her. After all, Daniel loved her, and the idea of having someone who could act as a mother was comforting to the boy. For a while, it seemed that their small family would thrive. Daniel was happier than he had been in years, and Aiden, despite missing his mother, started to believe that maybe this was how his life was supposed to be now. But as with all masks, Clara's facade began to slip. Over time, Clara's warm demeanor began to cool, especially when Daniel was not around. It started with small, almost unnoticeable things, Aiden's favorite toy disappearing, lunches being forgotten, and cold remarks instead of words of encouragement. Aiden, still a child, didn't fully understand why the woman who had promised to love and care for him was now acting so differently. He tried to brush it off, telling himself that maybe she was just having bad days. However, Clara's small cruelties began to pile up. She would mock Aiden for being clumsy, blame him for things he hadn't done, and her once affectionate gestures turned into cold, dismissive actions. On days when Daniel was at work, Clara's cruelty escalated. Aiden would ask for help with his homework, and she would ignore him. He would ask for a snack, and she would pretend not to hear. She began locking him in his room for hours, telling him he was worthless, that his father loved her more than he could ever love a child. Aiden, confused and hurt, never dared to tell his father. He was too young to understand why his stepmother had turned so hateful, and he didn't want to make his father upset. Aiden often sat alone in his room, staring out the window, wondering what he had done to make Clara hate him. His once vibrant and playful demeanor began to fade. The boy who used to laugh freely and play with boundless energy became withdrawn, quiet, and anxious. His friends at school noticed the change, and so did his teachers, but no one knew the extent of what was happening behind closed doors. Clara's resentment towards Aiden had deep roots, though Daniel and Aiden had no way of knowing. Her own childhood had been filled with pain and rejection. She had grown up in a broken home, neglected by her parents, and despised by her stepmother. The bitterness she harbored from her past had never healed, and now, in the presence of an innocent child who reminded her of her own abandonment, that bitterness turned to jealousy and hatred. She began to see Aiden as an obstacle to the life she wanted with Daniel a reminder of a past she wanted to forget. One cold winter evening, the tension in the house reached its breaking point. Daniel had left for a business trip, leaving Clara alone with Aiden. That night, Aiden accidentally spilled his dinner while setting the table. It was a simple mistake, but to Clara, it was the last straw. Her fury exploded. In a blind rage, she began screaming at Aiden, calling him names, accusing him of ruining her life. Aiden, terrified and confused, tried to apologize, but his words only fueled her anger. In a fit of uncontrollable rage, Clara grabbed Aiden and pushed him. He stumbled, lost his balance, and fell down the stairs. For a moment, the house was deathly silent. Clara stood at the top of the stairs, her heart pounding in her chest as she stared at Aiden's small, motionless body lying at the bottom. Panic set in. 
She rushed down the stairs, shaking him, trying to wake him up. His breathing was shallow and his face was pale. The realization of what she had done hit her like a tidal wave. But instead of calling for help, Clara's mind raced to cover up her crime. She dialed 911, but when the operator answered, Clara's voice was filled with feigned concern. He, he tripped down the stairs. It was an accident, she sobbed, though inside she was calculating every word. Aiden was rushed to the hospital in critical condition. Daniel arrived shortly after, his face pale with worry as doctors worked frantically to save his son. Clara played her role well, pretending to be the devastated mother figure, clinging to Daniel and crying about how much she cared for Aiden. But deep inside, Clara was terrified, not for Aiden's life, but for the truth to be revealed. Days passed and Aiden remained in a coma. Daniel was consumed by grief, praying for his son to wake up. Clara continued to act the part of the concerned stepmother, but cracks in her story began to show. One of the neighbors, a kind elderly woman who had always taken a liking to Aiden, came forward with unsettling information. She had often heard Aiden's cries and Clara's angry voice through the walls. The neighbor had noticed bruises on Aiden before, but she had dismissed it as typical childhood accidents. Now with Aiden in the hospital, she couldn't stay silent any longer. The police were called and an investigation was launched. Clara's past began to unravel and it wasn't long before the authorities uncovered the truth, the bruises, the emotional abuse, the cold neglect. It all pointed to a pattern of cruelty that had been escalating for months. Clara was arrested and charged with child abuse and attempted murder. Her facade had crumbled and the monster beneath was revealed. Despite the best efforts of the doctors, Aiden never regained consciousness. After weeks of fighting for his life, his small body gave in to the injuries. The funeral was heartbreaking. Daniel, shattered by grief, could barely stand as he said goodbye to his son. The boy who had brought so much light into his life was gone, taken by the very woman he had trusted to care for him. In the courtroom, Clara sat quietly as the judge sentenced her to a long prison term. Her once beautiful face was now hollow and cold, her eyes empty as she faced the consequences of her actions. But no prison sentence could bring back the life she had taken. Daniel, forever haunted by the loss of his son, was left to pick up the pieces of his shattered life. Aiden's story is not just one of tragedy, but a reminder that evil can hide behind the most charming of masks. It's a lesson about vigilance, about listening to the voices of children who may not always have the words to express their pain. It's a story about how the scars of the past, when left to fester, can lead to unimaginable cruelty. Most importantly, it's a story about the need for love and kindness, and how the absence of these can destroy lives. Let Aiden's light shine as a reminder that we must always protect the innocent, confront the wicked, and never turn a blind eye to the suffering of a child. The shadows that hide behind closed doors must be brought into the light, for it is only then that justice can be served.